Bruce Feldman, Fox Sports College football reporter, also for The Athletic, uh, which is interesting because you had a story on Jim Harbaugh, four-game suspension. I think this is the deepest team. I mean, they, they look like Georgia, like 10, 11 draftable guys. Let's start with a suspension. I don't even know what, what a suspension is in 2023, but apparently there was some deception to the NCAA. Did they see it coming? Was it a shock to the system? What did you make of it? So initially, when people were talking about this around the program, they thought it was going to be six games. And this is going back uh, into the winter months. So for it to be four games, and if you look at who the first four games for Michigan plays, yeah. any one of the three of us could coach those Saturday right. afternoons. Plus, as you said, the suspension is a little different. And he's not suspended for four, four weeks. He's suspended for four games, meaning the key part for him, and he's not a coordinator, uh, is going to be he's able to, you know, lead them at practice and everything around the games, if not for the games themselves. Yeah. Um, it's really a good roster. This is the most talented team Jim Harbaugh's had since he's been there. You said 11 or 12. So when I talked to Harbaugh the other day about in the initial part of this story, I'm working premise was, are they talented enough by the recruiting rankings? I know you follow those. Yeah. To to beat a Georgia, Alabama, or an Ohio State. And obviously they beat an Ohio State in the regular season. And when I talked to Harbaugh about it, he took it and ran, and he goes, I bet we are going to break there, Georgia's record for the draft. He thinks we're going to have 20 players off this team get drafted next year. 20. And he rattled off who they were. Do you think that salesmanship, so when they get to the playoff, potentially, w what it'll do is he wants everybody to know that when you're doing rankings this year, don't consider us below Georgia. We're now their equal. I don't think he's thinking that way. I think he genuinely believes, like Chris Jenkins, you guys remember who his dad was, former great defensive lineman in the NFL. Okay. His son was a three-star coming out of high school, but he was 240 pounds. Now he's 302 pounds, and you look at him, you're like, okay, that's what Georgia's playing with. Jim Harbaugh told me, I bet he's going to be a top 10 overall pick. So they've had guys who have really blossomed in their program I think the part, you know, like there are seven guys and who I talked to for the story, Jim Nagy, who runs the, you know, you've had him on for runs the senior yeah. bowl. He was like, we've never seen a, an offensive line this deep, this talented. Seven guys they think are draftable on the <laughs> O-line alone. You know, two terrific running backs, you know, a handful of guys on the defense. The part that I think will be most interesting is they have one of their few five stars is J.J. McCarthy. Look really good yeah. against Ohio State was really up and down against TCU. Yeah. If he plays the way people, you know, I talked to Brady, our buddy, Brady Quinn, Joel, they all think, wow, he has high-level potential. If he can play that way in the playoff, if they get to the playoff, um, I think they have a legit chance to win it because the three teams that are the most talented, Ohio State, Alabama, Georgia. They don't have quarterbacks. They all are breaking in new quarterbacks. Yeah. This might be a good timing year for Jim Harbaugh Four-game suspension notwithstanding. So Sark's team lost five one-score games. They were super young. Now the O-line's got sophomores and juniors. Uh, Quinn Ewers is a huge talent. He's got a little Jeff George in him where you can see the talent can get a little sloppy, a little loose, but the, it's there. My takeaway is if, if, and he's lost weight, he took up a new diet. What do you make of Texas? I, I'm, I'm a Sark fan because I, I like redemption stories, and I think he's a damn good offensive coach. Sometimes his defenses have been disappointing, but, you know, whatever. Everybody's got a side of the ball. Lincoln Riley's defenses haven't been great. What do you make of Texas? I kind of buy him this year. I, I think they'll be better. I, the part I'm leery of, Sark has never had a team in a, de in a decade as a head coach where they've won double digits. And so there's always been they've looked good. Like we had them last year. Alabama comes in. They should have beat them. Oh, they outplayed them. They outplayed them. There was a couple of questions. Bryce Young calls. did Bryce Young. But, but even still, they should have beaten them. Now, yours got hurt. Hudson Card, who's now at Purdue, he came in. He was also hurt, They and they still should have beaten them. But then all of a sudden, then you see some clunker performances. I think the question, and I, I spent some time with Quinn Ewers a couple of weeks ago, you know, lost 20 pounds, has really bought in, you know, obviously cut the mullet, which was like part of what his teammates and he see as him growing up. Yeah. Becoming more vocal. Some of the things you're talking about in terms of the, the intangibles and the it factor, I do think, I don't know if Jeff George would be that guy, but you're talking about a, a guy with wow arm talent wow arm. who maybe hasn't been the guy in terms of presence and all those things. You're hearing good things from the people inside the program about him. The part I'm not sure of is can this team 
be consistent enough to get to double-digit wins. The receiving room is good. I like what you said. Offensive line is t- more talented than it's been in a long time, but it's still young. Um, I just don't know if they consistently can beat the Kansas States and some of these other teams because I don't think the talent gap is – they don't have that much margin for error where if they don't have their A game all the time, almost anybody else – I think in the, in the Big Twelve can get them. Yeah, Kansas State's had their best team in a long time too. They got real a lot of returners. USC, buy them or not? I do. I think that you know they have the best player in college football. They have a a great offensive system. By the way, their O line is absolutely better. They quietly really upgraded the O line. Yeah, look, they don't have you know a guy like Tyrone Smith who is like an elite player. They don't have a, you know, going back way into the Pete days. But they, they have draftable guys. They, have, they don't have, like, I don't think they have a Ryan Khalil or that kind of guy. But, like, they have solid guys who've been around, right? I think that won't be an issue. They're super deep at receiver. As I said, the quarterback's great. I do think they have upgraded the defensive roster considerably with the guys they brought Bigger. in. The hard part for me is the schedule it feels like it's harder for them. And, again, like... Like we were saying a minute ago where they can't afford to take a step back. I think as long as Caleb's healthy, they're going to be able to beat everybody they play, I think, in games where it's 49 to 42, 49 I mean, to 35. Four of their last five games are Utah, Washington, Oregon, UCLA. That's a hard 5-0. and You know what's really hard about that is all those well, teams. Well, and Notre Dame. Like, in, including Notre Dame at Notre Dame, they all those are physical teams. UCLA is was more physical than them when they when they beat them around, and we had you know the, some of those were our games at Fox. Um, Washington is explosive on offense. I think Oregon. I visited both those schools. They're really dangerous. You know, Utah's obviously had their number a couple times. There's no off factor when they're going to play them. I mean, that's all. You know, again, I don't want to just over you know overlay Jaden Ott and Cal, but those last five of six. You got to pretty much get out of there. You can only afford one loss there. Yeah, and at Oregon is trouble. It's the combination. There's no, you know, three in a row where you're getting people you're going to give you their best punch. Yeah, at Notre Dame, I got Colorado, Arizona. I could rest people. I'm ready to go. The Utah game, if you beat Notre Dame, is a trap city. You come home, you take your, your foot off the gas. At Oregon is an L. That's a hard – I mean, they got an NFL quarterback too. Yeah, and I think what's tricky there is, you know, Notre Dame is physical. Utah is even more physical. So it's like just you're going to catch your breath and you're going to get somebody else who's going to punch in the face. That's – you know, it won't be a track game because they've lost to them, you know, two, two last two, you know twice last year. But I think that's the hard part. But I definitely think they have the talent to be a playoff team. Um and it wouldn't shock me. You know, we've only seen one guy win a Heisman twice. I think Caleb in this system is 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 that special. You know, he's it's it's just there's nothing out there like it. Yeah, as long as he's healthy, because they're gonna get in games where and I think it's good to have Cliff in there. I talked to Caleb a few weeks ago, and to have Cliff's perspective, Cliff is so sharp and tweaking little things and seeing what what another team is gonna do. I think it's another voice for for Lincoln to kind of utilize in game planning for Caleb to bounce stuff off of. I think it's a great situation. The Athletic and Fox Sports College football reporter. Love those Caleb highlights. Uh, Bruce Feldman, I just found out your uh, son is a slot receiver. Christian (laughs) McCaffrey running back hybrid combo deal. I'm not saying that. I think that's Jason saying that. Push him to receiver. I'm just going to tell you that running back's getting very dicey with income. NIL, I see a big future. I'm going to have Brady Quinn represent him. Because so <laughs> Brady's got the NBA. He's the smartest the guy out here. Bye. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.